uh, have a short word of prayer and bowing to please. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this time that we have, that we can study thy word. We pray, pray Father, that we may prove our fidelity to thee by keeping thy commandments. May our love for Christ be evidenced by in being engaged in not only a study of that word, but actively in advancing his cause. We pray that will continue to bless us in every right way and that we use these blessings to glorify thee. Again, we thank thee for Jesus, for thy blessings, and for those who work alongside us to, to advance the kingdom of Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> yeah, what uh, I'll do is try, try to go back uh, with some exercises. I think we started this last week, some exercises of lessons we have already learned. And I've titled these either as examples or exercises in uh, for example, self-supporting statements, you can go back to that lesson and use this, uh, these examples to refresh your memory and, and maybe to kind of a, get an exercise of, of uh, uh, what the lesson is trying to teach. So we're looking at self-supporting statement uh, examples. You know, they were self reports, uh, supportive statements, tautologies, and so forth. So we want to look at some, just to get an idea of uh, uh, what these are. The self-report, if re you recall, is something that you say or somebody uh, avows or avers is true, and it's their own experience. There's no way that you can prove it or uh, refute it and usually if somebody says you know i think this or this that and the other you have to assume that they do think that now whatever they're thinking uh, may be wrong or whatever they believe may be wrong but that's not what makes it a self-report what makes it self-report is that they're doing it you don't have to go anywhere else to know that that's what they're thinking or i'll i'll want to say it's usually prefaced by a term like I think this or that, or I believe this or that, or I feel this this or that. And uh, when somebody says that, how can you say they're not thinking or believing or feeling that? You can't. So those statements are assumed to be true. Now they can be lying to you, of course, but you have to assume that they're true. <clears throat> Yeah, the following uh, five statements um, are true or false by logical structure. And if the statement is true, as are the last three of these next five statements, it is a tautology. <clears throat> yeah, tautology is used in a, different, a number of different contexts. It can be a repetition of something and using different words, saying the same thing. That's a tautology. Or here in logic, it's a, a statement that cannot be false <clears throat> for the very simple reason that it covers everything, positive and negative, it covers it all. So it's a tautology, and we'll, we'll see. <clears throat> the sun is shining and it is not shining. Well, that's true. I can look outside in my uh, security cameras and I can, it's light outside. So, I, so the sun is shining. <clears throat> a little bit later, it won't be shining. So it's one or the other. So it's a true statement. Or I will go to school and I will not go to school. That's the only, if you're talking about school, and attend, attendance, there's only two possibilities. You, you'll either attend or you, or you, or you won't attend. 
or you're not going to go, or you're eating, or you're not eating. So it's one of the two. So that covers all possibilities. The coin coin will come up heads or not heads when it's assuming a typical coin, which is a two-sided coin. I suppose uh, in theory it could land on its edge. That'd be highly unlikely. So it's either going to be land on one side or the other. So it's either going to be hedged or not hedged. Our man can take a joke or he cannot take a joke. It's one of those two. So the statement is always true. So those are tautologies. Now, the following statements are true or false by definition. Now, bachelors are unmarried. <clears throat> now, we might want to go and, and uh, get a definition of a bachelor because a bachelor refers to a male. And I guess one can say that Seth is a bachelor. But there's a further definition of bachelor. It has to be a, an adult male, one that's of a marriageable age, and one that is, is not married and never has been married. <clears throat> so, by definition, that's a true statement. Bachelors are unmarried. The next one bachelors are little girls. Yeah, I know we could uh, make jokes about this, but <clears throat> let's just stick with uh, what we know to be true. Bachelors are adult males, so there's no way that they can be little girls. So that is a, by definition, is a false statement. So a square is four-sided. <clears throat> well, that makes it square. A square is a rectangle with four equal sides at 90 degree angles. So by definition, a square is four-sided. So that's a true statement. A square is not a polygon. Again, you might want to know what a polygon is. It's just a geometric figure that uh, has straight lines. It's not necessarily four. It could be three. It could be five, eight, whatever. But they have to be straight lines. So, so a square falls within the definition of a polygon. So by definition, this is a false statement. And your uncle is your relative. It doesn't matter if it's your blood uncle or uh, uncle by marriage. <clears throat> yeah, it can be a uncle in law, or what have you, but still, definitionally, that uncle is your relative. So, uh, let me give you kind of a better idea of what those are. Let's look at the uh, supported statements. Exercise. Remember, self reports. I feel. I think. I believe. Tautology. <clears throat> it, it covers all the possibilities. So it's either true or false by those possibilities. Self contradiction. Just the very uh, uh, nature of the definition. It, it contradicts itself. So it can't be true. And of course, we covered uh, true or false by definition. And supported, <clears throat> we can gather evidence to show that that statement is either true or false. <clears throat> For example, the snow is deep. Well, you probably can look at snow, and you know, if you if it's landscape that you're familiar with. You can probably look at it and tell whether or not it's deep, but if you just want to be sure, you can go out and step off in the snow or measure it, get you a yardstick and measure it, and 
you can determine his deep so it's supported by external evidence. I think Socrates was a wise man. <clears throat> well, I think so too, but uh, there's something I think, something we both think. So I'm uh, reporting, self-reporting what I think is the case. Paul was an apostle and he wasn't. And so this is saying he was an apostle and he, and he wasn't at the same time in the in the same sense. Well, that's a contradiction in terms. You, you can't have both of them. Both cannot be true. Since both cannot be true, this makes it a false statement. So it's a self-contradiction. Jericho fell to the invading Israelites. <clears throat> now we know this because we can go to the Bible and we can prove it by testimony in the Bible. So we we can get support for this statement that uh, shows it to be true. Now, I believe Paris really loved Helen, you know, Helen of Troy. And um, maybe he did love Helen and maybe he didn't. Maybe it was a uh, politics, maybe it wasn't, but I believe it. I believe Paris really loved Helen, so it's a self report. I'm telling you what I think is the case, or what I believe to be the case, and I have no other proof. A square has uh, five sides. Well, we know what the definition of a square is, and it only has four and exactly four sides, and of course they're straight lines at 90 degrees to each other. So that's false by definition. The book of Genesis has 50 chap chapters. All we have to do is open up the uh, book of uh, Genesis and thumb through it and find that it has 50 chapters so we can get support from it from a, an external source. Jesus is God or he is not God. And that's a tautology because that covers all possibilities. He's one or the other. Uh, number nine, Jesus is God and he is man. Well, that is a supported statement because the Bible says that he is, if you want to say God, man, he came in the flesh, but he's as much God as Father and the Holy Spirit. So we can go to external evidence to prove that to be true. And Jeremiah was a reluctant prophet or let me, I skipped one. I think the snow was deeper than last year. Again, you can't uh, very well go to last year and uh, measure the snow. You probably go to weather reports and what have you. But it's really something, uh, if you go no further than that, it's just something that you think. It seems to you that uh, snow now is deeper than last year. So that's a self-report. Jeremiah was a reluctant prophet. Again, we can go to the Bible and uh, see that he was a reluctant prophet, but he took on the uh, uh, duties that God assigned to him. So that's supported. We can go to the Bible to confirm that. My mother is a woman. <clears throat> uh, that's true by definition because all mothers are women it either works or it doesn't work again that's a tautology because that covers all possibilities now if we had said it either wor it works and it doesn't work 
that'd be a contradiction. Dante was a poet where we can go and look at the uh, things he wrote and determine if he was a, a poet or, or not a poet. <clears throat> so that's supported. We can go to external evidence to prove that. <clears throat> the New Testament was written in Greek. Again, we can go to external evidence to prove that statement to be true. So that covers the whole gamut of uh, statements. Let's look at uh, relationships. And let's see if these uh, statements are, uh, we can say, true or false. The sun is hot. <clears throat> The moon is white. Are these uh, consistent or inconsistent statements? Well, they don't contradict each other. The sun is hot. We know that from scientific evidence. And uh, the moon is white or appears white. I suppose it can be a yellow moon, but uh, it's a if you look at the planes of the moon, they're really white. So uh, they're consistent. They don't contradict each other. So let's look at uh, number two. Paul was the author of Romans. Peter was the author of Romans. Well, they both can't be the author of Romans. If we're talking about the same Romans, the letter that's in the uh, New Testament, we know that, uh, or at least we believe Paul to be the author of Romans. It's generally conceded that he was the author. So this would be an inconsistent statement. They, they can't both, or both be true. I suppose they can both be false, but they can't both be true. Number three, Sally told a lie once. And she usually tells the truth. Whether well, the very fact that she told a lie once and the other time she told the truth means that she usually tells the truth. So these statements are not inconsistent. All fish have fins, and some fish do not have fins. Well, these are uh, inconsistent because I don't know of any fish that don't have fins. They all have fins, even eel, it's a, it's a fish, but it has fins. Number five, God knows all things. And God does not know all things. Well, we can readily see that, that that is a contradiction. So these two statements are inconsistent. So you'd circle uh, no because you're inconsistent. For the next uh, five sets of statements, uh, we can circle why uh, if the First statement implies the second, or so circle no if it does not. <clears throat> I suppose you could circle Y if I have a typo there, but <clears throat> that's not one of the questions. So, <clears throat> does the first statement imply the second? God created everything, God created porcupines. Well, porcupines are a subset of everything. And God created everything. So it has to be that uh, God created porcupines as well. So the second statement is implied by the first. Or the first statement implies the second. However you want to state it. So you would circle a yes. All watermelons are green. And some 
watermelons are green. I don't know if any watermelon, I know the meat can be different colored, but I don't know of any watermelons that are not at least predominantly green. <clears throat> so um, the first statement implies the second. If all of them are green, remember in the logic, some just means it's part of the all. And it's not saying anything about the other part of the all. So we know that some is part of the all, so some are green. So that would have to be a yes. Number eight, honey is sweet. And the second statement is, I hate honey. The first statement is true, of course, and the second statement is also true. It's a self-report. But how does the first one imply the second one? What if the honey was not sweet? And I could still hate honey. Or what if it was some other, had some other taste attribute? I may still hate it. So the, the uh, statement honey is sweet does not imply the second. So that had to be a no. The Bible is the word of God. Ecclesiastes is the word of God. When we speak of the Bible, we're talking about the uh, 66 books that begin, begins with Genesis and ends with Revelation. And included in that 66 books is Ecclesiastes. So Ecclesiastes is the word of God, is part of the Bible. The Bible is the word of God, so the it's implied by the first statement, or the first statement implies the second. So you have to circle a yes. Last one, some trees are tall, which is true. Some trees, trees are tall. And all trees are tall. Well, we know even some grown trees are not tall, but certainly very young ones, sprouts, not tall at all, they're still trees. So the first statement does not imply the second. So we'd have to circle no. In the next uh, <clears throat> series of questions, which of the following sets, five sets of statements are logically equivalent? If they are logically equivalent, circle Y. And if they're not, logically equipment circle no no baptists are americans and no americans are baptists well we're not asking that these things are true we're just saying are they uh, logically equivalent they happen to be both be false but they're still uh, logically equivalent if there are no Baptists that are Americans, then there cannot be um, any Americans that are Baptists. So these are not uh, these are these are uh, logically equivalent. They're both false, but they're logically equivalent. All dogs are four-legged animals. All four-legged animals are dogs. Well, the first one's true. All dogs are four-legged animals. And the second one, um, you could uh, say there are some animals that uh, walk on two legs. And you know, like apes and what have you, you wouldn't call their arms legs. So that would be a false statement. But the second statement is not implied by the first statement. So we'd have to circle no. Thir uh, number 13, no apples or oranges and no oranges or bananas. One statement has absolutely no connection with the other statement. So we'd have to circle no there also. 
some apostles were scripture writers and some scripture writers were apostles. Well, that's uh, both true. Some apostles were scripture writers. Well, if that's true, then it has to be. The implication is that some scripture writers were apostles. So we'd have to circle yes. No windmills or giants. Uh, you can say either giant people or, or just giant structures, whatever you want to say. <clears throat> and no giants or windmills. Well, if, <clears throat> if no wind, windmills or giant structures, and I'm not sure what the definition of a giant is, but we we'll just say large. No windmills are large or large, uh, no windmills are large uh, windmills, let's just say that, or large structures. <clears throat> and no larger structures are windmills. We're saying the same thing, just uh, just wording it a little differently. So they're both saying exactly the same thing. So they are logically equivalent. So let's uh, look at the uh, following five statements for independence. independency. Uh, they stand alone. Circle Y if independent. Circle no if um, not independent. The typewriter is broken. Obadiah is my favorite book. One statement has absolutely nothing to do with the other statement. So they're independent statements. So that'd be a yes. Logic is hard. And I think most of you will agree with that. <laughs> and Spanish is hard. Well, to us, it, it probably is hard. And uh, we're an English audience, so we'll just assume that Spanish is hard. But that had to be uh, independent statements. One is not dependent upon the other. So we'd have to circle yes. Number 18, God created all the stars. Well, let's pick out a, a uh, any star. Let's just pick out a star. Just look up in the heavens, pick out a star. Did God create that individual star? Well, if he created all stars and you're looking at one particular star, then necessarily he created that star. So these are uh, these are not independent statements. And, you know, they're both true, but they're not independent statements, so we'd have to circle no. Number 19, some triangles are yellow and some tricycles are red. Well, one is not uh, dependent on the other. So these are independent statements, so we'd have to circle yes. Alan wrote this poem. Alan has written no poems. Well, one, only one can be true. If Alan wrote this poem, then it, if he, they were, uh, the implication would be that Alan has written poems. He says Alan has written no poems. So these are independent uh, statements. Or uh, they're not independent. <clears throat> because the implication is, if he's written a poem, then he's uh, written this particular poem. So uh, it's not independent, so we'd have to circle no. Let's uh, look at this uh, following two statements. Some 
soldiers are painters. Some soldiers are not painters. So we need to answer the following questions. Are these statements consistent? They are consistent because both can be true. And remember some, uh, you, you know, if you're talking about all soldiers, you're just picking out some of them are painters. Not saying anything about the rest of them and so forth. Uh, so the uh, second deal, some soldiers are not painters. We're just picking out some painters. We're not saying anything about the rest of them. So it can be true that uh, some could be painters and some could not be painters. So are these statements consistent? They're consistent because both of them can be true. What well, does the first one imply the second? Uh, it first does not imply the second. If it were true that some soldiers are painters, it would still be possible that all soldiers are painters. Remember, some, some when you say some in logic, you're not saying anything about the rest of them, or they all. So if you say some are painters, it is possible, let's say 40% of them are, are painters, it is possible that the other 60% are painters also. It's just the way uh, the sum in logic works. Well, are they equivalent? Uh, they are not equivalent because they can have different truth values. So one is saying one thing and one is saying another thing. One saying some are painters, the other is saying some are not painters. So they're not equivalent. Are they independent? <clears throat> well, they're not independent because they both cannot be false. If some soldiers are painters, if that's false, then it's true that some soldiers are not painters. But if some soldiers are not painters, is that, if that's false, then it can be true that some soldiers are painters. It could be all of them are painters, in which case some soldiers are not painters can be false. But they both can't be false. So you may want to look at the, these again in your uh, spare time. <clears throat> Let's look at the consistency and disagreement. Number one, real disagreement. Luther says no man has free will. Whereas Erasmus says all men have free will. Lee says the South had the right to secede. And Grant says the, right, the South did not have the right to secede. There can be no doubt that, you know, they're using the same terms, free will, in both cases, and the right to secede in both cases. So this is a real disagreement. And, they, you know, they can state these in a syllogism, then they can argue uh, whether the syllogisms, assuming it's a valid syllogism, they can argue whether the syllogism uh, whether the premises are true or false. But the disagreement is real. That's that's the subject matter of a, uh, a debate. And an apparent disagreement, uh, Peter would say, I think you should stay in Jerusalem. And Paul says, I think I should go to Rome. Whether one should or should not stay in a particular place or go to a particular place, is not the issue. The issue is what do they think? And you might say there's a disagreement here, but they're just thinking it. So it's it's not a real uh, disagreement, it's just an apparent disagreement. 
Homer says, I enjoy poetry that is sung. And Virgil says, I enjoy poetry, a poetry that is recited. You're talking about their, their feelings, what they enjoy, don't enjoy. And both can be true. And there's no way that you can dispute it. <clears throat> you know, David says, I enjoy turnip greens. And I say, I hate turnip greens. Well, that didn't mean turnip greens are an object or love or hate. It just means he likes it and I don't. A verbal disagreement uh, in the word underlined is being used differently. William says all of Scotland must go to war. And Robert says, no, only the men of Scotland must go to war. So if you just look at this uh, on the surface, it may look like there's a disagreement here. And it depends how they use the, war, the uh, term Scotland. Does William mean that the women and children, babies, all must go to war. Now I understand the uh, uh, when we're talking about total war, all people are, are caught up in it, can be avoided, but go to war means you're actively engaged in the fighting of the war. So does, does uh, William say that every last person must actually take up arms and go to war? Whereas Robert means that, no, we are talking about Scottish people, but only the men, and that's adult men. We're not talking about boys, not talking about babies. Adult men must go to war. So they're using Scotland in a different sense. Uh, the following uh, two statements are consistent, but they're not independent. All roads lead to Rome. And at least some roads lead to Rome. Remember, you know, if they're not independent, then one implies the other. And some, in logic, mean just part of the all. It says nothing about the rest of the all. So if all roads lead to Rome, and at least they're, some of them, 20%, 30%, 40%, all lead to Rome. The rest of them, they lead to Rome too, but that part that uh, is ripped in, uh, rips in by some, lead to Rome. So, uh, if people disagree with this, then they're just using uh, some and all in, in different sense, all roads and some roads in a different sense. <clears throat> Uh, these are, I should say, these are a consistent statement because one uh, implies the other. Let's look at another exercise. And if you had your square of opposition before you, you could uh, look at there and you could tell exactly what these are. Some cowboys are intellectuals. You remember the some are at the bottom of the square. And some points to a particular portion of the universe of whatever it is you're talking about. And so, so when you say some, you're talking about a, a portion of all cowboys. You're talking about a particular part of all cowboys. So that is a particular statement. And you're saying they are something, intellectuals, <clears throat> may not be a true statement, that's not the point. So you're affirming that cowboys are intellectuals. So looking at your square, that is a, a particular affirmative. You can, next one, all scripture is God breathed writing. All is at the top of the square, that's the universal. And it's also affirming something. So it's a universal affirmative. 
So some children are not students. <clears throat> uh, some, again, is at the bottom. And um, I have that wrong there. Some children are not. When you say not, that's a negative. So instead, uh, some children are not students. That's a particular negative. So I've got that wrong there. No, hin no Christians are Hindus. No, none. That means everything. So no Christians are Hindus. You're affirming that uh, something about no Christians. So that's a particular affirmative. Some writers are not poets. Some, again, you're talking about a particular portion of it. So that's a particular not. You're negating uh, what it, some writers are. You're negating it. So that's a negative. All dogs are carnivores. All dogs encompasses every last dog breed, whatever, three-legged, four-legged dogs, tails, no tails, all dogs. They are carnivores. They eat meat. So you're affirming something about all dogs. So that's a universal affirmative. No Trojans are Greeks. No means every last Trojan. And of course, we know Troy is not in Greece. <clears throat> so we this is a uh, true statement. So no Trojans are Greeks. So that's a universal negative. And some soldiers are not brave men. Some, again, indicates a particular portion of it. And not, you're negating something. You're saying that these some soldiers are not this. So that's a particular negative. And all men are mortal. All men is everyone. All of men and the males. In immortal, you're affirming something about them, so it's a universal affirmative. And you might want to look at these again in conjunction with the uh, uh, narrative, the uh, uh, lesson itself, and maybe this will embed further in your mind exactly what these lessons are about. And, may aid you further in your uh, studies. Hopefully that will be the result. I see we're over time, so we'll conclude here and we'll pick up this uh, next time. Thank you.